In the last few years, the iPad has gone from being just a nice to have luxury tablet to a complimentary, if not secondary, workstation for photographers on the move. Now, personally, I was deep in doubt about this. You know, growing up with the iPad as something, a gadget for my Kindle and also you know, just for browsing and for games. But I'm always up for an experiment. So I tested this workflow on a recent trip to Club Paradise in Palawan and the results blew my mind. So normally on any trip, I would bring my MacBook Pro as my workstation. I mean, who wouldn't, right? I'd use it to ingest photos or videos and do editing work and, you know, preview the dailies that I've shot for the day and, you know, do mundane clerical work that I need to complete. But last year, around August, I was working on a project with Fujifilm. You can check out the video right here. And uh, we were in the mountains. I was working into the night and I accidentally left the flap or the cover open of the MacBook Pro. And by the time I woke up in the morning, it wouldn't start. You know, a low hanging fog probably um, went into the, the house that we were staying in and fried all the electronics. So uh, it had me thinking maybe I should have another workstation with me, but I couldn't justify the weight, especially if I'm traveling alone. So like, subscribe and hit that notification bell and see how this nifty tablet turned into a workstation that I could actually solely rely on. All right, so let's talk about my rig or my workstation setup, iPad workstation setup that I brought with me on this trip slash experiment. First, I have the iPad Pro 11 inch. So you may be asking why I didn't go for the 12.9 inch, the bigger one with a bigger screen, because you know, it's better to have more uh, screen real estate. Well, it's just too heavy and it's just too bulky, especially with a magic keyboard. So it defeated the purpose of why I'm going the whole iPad secondary workstation route. So the iPad, this iPad Pro 11 inch has a liquid retina display and it has 512 gigabytes of storage. Perfect for what I'm trying to do. It also has an STM Rugged Plus iPad case in midnight blue. And that's important for me because most of my gear is in black. So at least now I can easily pull it out when I'm looking into the bag and not having to search around for it. It also has protective coating of Panzer glass. So I'm always out in the field and that extra layer that gives me peace of mind that my gear is well protected is, um, you know, it's crucial. Next is the second gen Apple Pencil right beside the iPad and the I sketch and I make notes. I want to make full use of the iPad. So this is a no brainer. But if you look at it, actually, what I love about this case is that you can easily slot the pencil right there. The most important piece of accessory here on this table right now is actually this hyperdrive USB-C hub. Normally, it'd be flush against the side of the iPad Pro. But unfortunately, because of my case, I can't do that. So it has this uh, option to replace that part of the USB-C hub with this cable, right? So now it's fixed. I just had to screw it on and that was really convenient. But again, to make the iPad Pro a workstation, a working workstation that could actually be standalone, you need this USB-C hub. Why? Well, first it has an HDMI port, it has a USB-C charging cable, it has slots for a micro SD and SD card, and then for a USB 3 gadget like here, my hard drive, and then of course um, a headphone jack because the iPad Pro doesn't have one. All right, now I also use uh, a Nikon Z7, so it uses XQD card, so I need this which is an XQD card reader. I bought this probably two, three years ago that ends with the USB-C uh, connection. So for the USB-C hub I have here, I just connect it and it becomes a, a, da a daisy chain of a dongle. And lastly, of course, would be the hard drive. So there's a USB-3 hard drive. It's been with me for so long, probably five years, and I still use it. It's rugged. It's the Lacie rugged version that is USB-3. I think this is, uh, 
I, I'm not sure, 500 gig probably. Just check it out in the description. The opportunity to head out solely with an iPad Pro couldn't have come at a better time. My small family decided on a last minute end of summer beach trip to Club Paradise in Coron, Palawan. The beach, the pool, and the wildlife were just perfect for our little outdoor family. I got to fly my drone, I got to snorkel, and most importantly, I took a lot of photos. All right, guys, so let's get into the meat of this episode by showing you my iPad Pro editing workflow. Let's do it. Okay, first, so I have my iPad Pro 11 inch right here. The first thing I will do is connect my USB-C hub, the hyperdrive right here. And for the purposes of this demonstration, I will connect an HDMI cable to the side, just so that you can see my screen better. Like, let's test it out. The first thing that you need to do is go to the settings and then display and brightness and make sure you turn off true tone and also night shift. So this makes sure that what you see is what you get when it comes to the screen and the colors. Also, I would increase the brightness up to 100% just to make sure that I see everything. Next, I will fire up my Lightroom and as you can see, I already have all the photos in, but again, for the sake of this demonstration, I will simulate ingesting all the photos all over again. So what I'll do first is have another album, right? And I'll make it a um, demo. And then I'll click on this button right here. You can see that there is an image icon with a plus sign on it. And I'll click from camera device. Okay, so you see the photos, they are loading. And you can see it's blazing fast. These are heavy um, photos, meaning the file sizes are kind of huge, but probably between 30 to 45 megabytes each. So it's easy as pie. You can either select all the photos uh, that's on the card itself or just for the day. One thing, one tip that I was able to find out for myself is that if you just press and hold, you can actually select more photos. All right, so I've selected some photos and let's hit import. And it happens very fast. So it copies all the photos, adds it to your demo folder or to my demo folder. And as it does this, if you click the cloud icon, it's currently syncing and you know uploading the raw files on the cloud itself. And that was it. That was that was it. That was really, really fast. And now we get to the editing proper. All right, so let's select a photo right here. So my screen isn't calibrated. So to accommodate for that, I always turn on overlays. So this allows me to properly gauge the exposure of the image that I'm looking at, it's basically the same as when I'm shooting with a camera. I turn on the histogram. I don't rely on the LCD brightness. I look through the viewfinder and that's how I gauge the exposure of the photo itself. Okay, right. So we just get into it. Normally, I would increase the shadows. So you can see outright that the iPad Pro 11, or at least working with the iPad Pro 11, is very responsive. So these are just random, basic, global adjustments that I'm doing here, just so that you can see how it goes. And then, just some clarity, daze it a bit. And that's it. That's how I edit my photos. I rarely spend more than 15 minutes editing my photos, actually whether it's wildlife or for travel, I, it's just the way I work. You know, I like getting things right straight out of camera or SOOC. The only time that I really put in a lot of work when it comes to photos is when I'm doing fine art, where you have you know, more freedom and more creative license to work on your photo. But you can also reset it. You can just click the, this icon here, the history icon, and just go to the original and click apply. 
and you can even add any of your presets. So here I have Masten Labs. I could probably select Adventure Every Day and go Cool 200, or I could go to it's that I use. I normally use uh, Portrait Original, and my favorite will be Portrait 400, and then I go back and start editing during the contrast and bring up the saturation oh sorry the vibrance and and yeah that that there really isn't much more to it uh, aside from um, additional post-production work so so here's the thing uh, when it comes to editing my photos I do uh, follow that 15 minute rule I it's not a rule but it's just how I work but if I wanted to pursue the post-production further since it uploads into the cloud i can turn on lightroom cc on my desktop on my sorry on my macbook pro when i get home and you know export one of the photos to photoshop work my magic into it and then use nick collection 5 which is recently released by the way and finish it off there but you know that's that's a completely different process and when it comes to travel, I don't get into that. So what I have here, what I was able to do with this iPad Pro, I demonstration demonstrated to you, that's, that's it, that's amazing. Another wonderful thing that this allows me to do is edit my photos from my iPhone 13 Pro Max. So as you know, when you're out on a trip with, with your family, you take photos with your main camera, but at the same time also with your phone. So let me show you how it's done. So I actually didn't take any photos with this phone for that recent trip because I focused on the 50mm and Z6 um, combination, but I did take a few photos in my last assignment um, in Masungi G Reserve. So what I will do is try to demonstrate using those photos. So there are two ways I can do this. I could select the photos and then uh, use AirDrop for it, you know, click share and then airdrop to my iPad Pro. But another, I think, more efficient way is just go to Lightroom and then create a new album. And let's say iPhone photos. And then, you know, do the same thing that I did with iPad Pro, click plus, and then from camera roll, allow access to photos. And these are all DNG. So I was making sure that I was shooting in raw as well so that I could edit it. And let's say I would select some of these photos and then add it. And there it is. And you can see on the cloud, it's uploading. So let's check it out. On the iPad Pro. Okay, okay. Now, as you can see here, we have the iPhone Photos album on my iPad Pro, and again, I can edit to my heart's content. So I could pick, let's say, Adventure Every Day, or maybe Lifestyle Every Day, just to get things across. Superia, I love the Superia preset, and then just adjust everything. I also make sure that I'm looking at my histogram on the upper left to see how everything is going. And yeah, there you have it. That is the workflow for both iPad Pro and also if you have an iPhone 13 Pro Max. Now, another important function of any workstation is backup or ingesting files. So I'm talking about all the footage and photos that I took with my Phantom 4 Pro and my GoPro. So the first thing that I'll have to do would be to take the micro SD card and put it into the corresponding slot on my hyperdrive USB-C hub. And the next thing that I will do will be to get my hard drive right here and connect it as well. So what I have to do is head to files 
and you can see right here no name that is my SD card from my drone Click select and then select all and all I have to do is click move move actually stands for copy so I was looking for the copy function but I realized it's also the same as the move function so don't be confused so all I have to do is move it and select um, let's say a folder here Club Paradise and Arial and I've done it before so I don't need to do it again and just click copy and everything will transfer accordingly as you have seen I was able to do everything that I usually do with a MacBook Pro 16 inch with this very powerful iPad Pro 11 and I am convinced that this will be a mainstay or a primary workstation for my personal trips and a secondary workstation when I'm out on assignment. And let me give you a few reasons why. First, ingesting photos is no sweat. So you just go to camera device and it just basically goes through all the photos and it's very, very easy to input them and also upload them in the cloud as you work. And of course, because of the power of the M1 chip, Editing photos is literally a breeze, right? You can't really appreciate it with this shot, but the liquid retina display is very clear, it's very crisp, and it's accurate enough for the post-processing work that I need done. And at the same time, you can always rely on the histogram for a more accurate readout of the exposure. Plus, if you need more post-processing work, then it uploads to the cloud anyway, and you can edit further on your desktop or on your MacBook Pro, whether you want to bring it to Photoshop or add more, you know, more fine-tuned um, adjustments using Nick Collection 5. It also achieves the primary requirement, which is to have a secondary workstation that doesn't have the same size or weight as another workstation so this means that i could add more cameras or gadgets with me in my hand carry luggage another advantage because of the size is that it's easy to pass around whether i'm working on an assignment and i want to show the rushes or the dailies to my clients or in the case of this last trip for my wife pam to go through all the photos from the day and just really enjoy them i think that one actually is the most significant um, advantage of this iPad. Lastly, because everything is done on an iPad, it's very easy to just hit share, export to camera roll, and when you get to the camera roll, it's very easy to just share it on Instagram or Facebook. And there you have it. If you're interested in any of the items that I showed, then if you're in the Philippines, check them out in PowerMax Center. They have branches nationwide and they have all of these. If you're outside the Philippines, I've put links, Amazon links in the description below. Now, if you have stories related to the iPad Pro 11 as your main workstation, I love success stories. So please put them in the comment section below. If you want to see more of my work, head on over to Instagram, Noel Guevara Photo. Cheers guys, and I'll see you in the next video.